Hi there, this is Bravo One with Bravo Team Airsoft, and today I'm going to do a quick review of the video I'm building for this time, and this is the 18th Military Police Kit. So this isn't going to be a very big kit, there's not a lot to it, uh, but I thought a while back the idea of me and Bravo Two was going to go as a uh, military police to an event at some point. So we started looking into the kit and googling the pictures and finding out what we can. The information I know is quite li limited for the 18th Military Police, so there's probably a lot I don't know because I've not looked that in depth to it to get the ins and outs of every way they do it with the units and the areas and all that sort of stuff. This is a rough idea for Airsoft or Vietnam Airsoft Milsims if you like on Military Police Kit. So I'm going to go over what I've got and why and then just show you a quick glimpse of what I've built. It's, like I said, it's not going to be a lot of kit because there's not a lot to it. It's just your basic uh, guard patrolman or your guy on base. This is pretty much what I've based it on. So first I'm going to go over the weapons. So this is my um, custom built M16A1. I say custom built because it's built with several different components. It's not any specific made in model. So um, this is obviously a standard issue rifle for most units in Vietnam as you probably know now if you've been watching the channel for a while and you've seen a few other videos. This is pretty much in every video I've done for some reason or some variation of it. So this obviously is a standard for the M16 with the military police. Uh, as you, If you google it, it images the 18th military police in Vietnam this is more than likely what they're going to be carrying. There is a few variants. So yeah that's basically it for the M16. So they also did use the M16 M203. Uh, some people have seen this and probably thinking no they didn't. Well there is actually an image on Google of a couple of blokes from the 18th Country Police sat in a Ford Mutt Jeep and one of them is actually using an M16 M203 and if you look vaguely you can just make out the um, armband that says military police and then the, uh, the brigade at the top which is the 18th military police so the M16 M203 is an option now I can't really do this on my version of M16 M203 because it's done out for an Australian type kit the one I saw didn't have anything fancy on it, it was just basically an M16 with a 203 underneath it they were all in black and that was just bog standard Whereas my M16's got a field bandolier on the back and it's all painted up and cammed up for Australian SAS, which is kind of our base mine. So I can't, well, I could probably use it at a push, but it's not really ideal for the um, exact kit of 18 military police. So they're the two M16s, so I'm just going to put this down so I can talk about the others. So I've also seen images of the military police using grease guns. I no longer have my grease gun and I swapped it back with Bravo 2 and I can't seem to get it back off him. But um, uh, M3 Grease will probably be a good option for military police as well as I've seen that sort of picture. So the next ones I'm going to go over is shotguns as they were quite commonly used throughout the uh, military police in Vietnam. So originally it would have been a Stevens shotgun. I think that was the most common one that they used in Vietnam. Primarily used for the um, Arvin units. And the stock was slightly cut down to fit them but it didn't quite fit Americans as well. So one that was... Um, often used by the military police was a Remington 870, more late war if anything, but because I have a Remington 870 I thought this might go well with this kit. So this is my Remington 870, this is one with the extended mag tube, I believe some of them had the original short ones, but this was around, it was in production. So in limited batches of the military they did use the 870, so um, that's what I've brought this in for. So this is my Remington 870, I don't know the make or the model, as I swapped this off Bravo 2 many years ago. And it has no distinctive features on who actually made it other than the um, make on the side which says Remington 870 model. Um, other than that there's no markings on it. This is a single action shotgun so it can fire like a sniper rifle. Pump it back, fire you around, fires one round uh, instead of the tri shots like most shotguns. But as far as looks goes this is metal and wood, there's no plastic on it. It's an excellent looking bit of kit. So for the sake of um, being a military police guard this would be quite handy to carry you know, on the gate. In and out of Milsims, people coming in, I figured this would be quite a good bit of kit. So that's my 870. Again, the Stevens would have been the more ideal option, but I don't even know if they make one in uh, Stevens in Airsoft. I'm unknown whether they do or not. Not that I've seen, but I don't find shotguns that practical in Airsoft. I've got them really for collection purposes more than practicality. So even if they do do one, I can't see me really getting one. Another option would have been the Ithaca or the Trench Gun. I do believe they make them in Airsoft, but they're quite rare and I don't have one, uh, either of them, because they're not something I'm that practical with, so I don't really use them. Uh, the next one would have been the Mossberg 500. So um, this wasn't ever used or adopted by any military organisation within Vietnam that I know of. Now I know it existed, but I don't know if it any, ever actually been used by any military organisation. As far as I'm aware, every one of these that were in Vietnam were per uh, personally purchased 
through something like uh, you know American Gunman or Guns and Ammo or something along them lines where they'd have got it from a magazine and then had it shipped out to Vietnam. So it did exist but it weren't widely used and it weren't anything that was used by any organisation. It wasn't bought from the Army, Navy or whatever. So this is my Remington, uh, my Mossberg 500. Now this one is a tri shot one. So Rock Smack. It's got uh, three round action. It's Roth Gas. This one's run by Green Gas. It's been pretty good. I wouldn't get that many shots out of it, maybe six or seven before the gas completely vents and you've got nothing left. But uh, again, for just standing on a gate as a part of a um, gate, you know, coming in and out of patrols and whatever, I think it would look quite well. And I have got a couple of fake shells as well, so I could always put these in a hat or in my webbing or anything to sell the fact that I'm shells. Even though it doesn't actually use shells, you twist this bit off here and the uh, BBs rock into the under the tube. Looks like they would on a real shotgun where they'd be in the magwell. So that's the shotguns. So I have one more, which is probably being uncommon, but I have uh, seen a picture of it and heard of it being used within the military police. And that is the Remington 870. Again, this is in late war and there are probably other variants that they would have used, such as the Springfield and whatever else that was in Vietnam at the time. So this is my Remington 700. So for certain cases within the Vietnam War, I do know of military police being issued with these for special situations. So this is what I'm going to use for this. This is actually... Uh, uh, a rifle that's actually a real Remington 700 stock on a Tokyo Marui VSR 10 which I've built myself so there's not actually any plastic on this it's all metal wood and a real leather sling so again yeah this is my uh, Remington 700 for them special circumstances that I may need a sniper rifle as I did know they was they was issued with various sniper rifles for various reasons so that's all basically the rifles I don't know they could have used other guns other than what I've got but to my knowledge that's all the rifles that they would use or submachine guns that they would use within Vietnam that are found via videos or pictures. So the next one is obviously going to be the sidearm which for this I've gone with the Colt 1911 this is a custom Milan Loeb one I've built myself. Um, I have several different 1911s for several different kits and without keeping them all bog standard I've often done some of my own things. This is actually a WeTech magazine that's in it, as they take WeTech mags. This one's originally based off the game from Black Ops. So if you look closely in the details on them, they've got like little serrations and naming. Uh, so I'm assuming that's where this, this idea has come from. But uh, I've had the slide uh, painted black. I've put on a like sort of nickel um, barrel, it's nickel hammer, nickel. I polished the trigger just to give it more of a personal edge as I don't want to have well, I think I've got about six or seven 1911s for six or seven different kits and I've all tried to make them unique as opposed to every one of them being bog standard so I know what gun belongs to what kit this belongs to my 18th military police kit so that's all the guns I could have used other things such as revolvers and browning high powers I'm guessing if it was personal uh, personal use as it seems to have been a lot of that in Vietnam where people could use their own weapons in country so military police could have gone with revolvers, Colt Pivens or Brownings I suppose but for simplicity's sake and for what I've seen in the pictures I've gone with the Colt 1911. So obviously I have a 1911 holster which is you know the, back, the standard black one which was uh, common especially late war uh, for that which you see in a lot of the pictures. Then I have a 1911 magazine holster which is the leather one which contains uh, two WeTech 1911 magazines which is roughly the same type of size of the mags they would have used so that's in the lever on my belt on the other side of my belt I have a field bandolier patch now this probably could have had a field bandana patch but I've actually got handcuffs in it and these are real genuine Vietnam era handcuffs so you lose the keys to these I really am in trouble but I put them in here because I've seen in some of the photos that they have pouches on the front so this could have been where they put the handcuffs but it could have been for a you know field bandolier for first aid so on the back of that I have the baton, I'm not going to take this out because the lever is quite tough and if I take it out I might not be able to get it back in. It's there really for show if anything so I'm not actually going to use it and beat anyone with it, it's just there for looks as that's the same type of stuff they would have had on their kit. On the back I have an M56 um, water bottle pouch with a water bottle. Then uniform I've gone with um, third pattern uh, tropical uniform Vietnam and greens. Pretty bog standard, especially for late war with the pockets at the sides. Same with the trousers. I've gone matching shirt and trousers. And then I've gone with the obvious uh, Vietnam jungle boots, which I'm not going to bother showing you because you've seen several of the videos and you're into Vietnam, you already know what I'm talking about. Uh, the last thing I'm going to go is the brassard, I believe they called it, 
which is this one's a homemade one it's not an original one because this isn't a loadout i'm going to use very often i didn't want to spend 70 to 100 odd pound buying a real brassard uh, i've seen some on ebay but they're quite dear and i've looked at them thinking yeah i want one but it's going to be a collection thing more than anything it's not something i'm actually going to use it's just going to be an occasional thing that i use now and then so i thought i'd make one myself so i bought a black brassard put a pin on it got the badges and sewn the badges on i bought them individually sewed them on myself so if i just zoom in probably get a better look if the lighting's not catching so yeah basically that's the brassard that i've made myself uh so obviously for military police and for uh, you know limited time in airsoft i thought that might be ideal to do so the last thing i want to talk about is the m1 helmet that i've built now again i didn't want to spend hundreds of pounds on a kit that i'm not really going to use it's going to spend the majority of its time in the cupboard because it's not something i'm going to use very frequently and it's very basic for what it is and that is the m1 helmet now this m1 in particular is not a real m1 this is a well i, I don't know what do you, what do you call it. it could be a toy helmet or an airsoft prop i'm not entirely certain what they what would reverse this helmet but basically it is a plastic m1 with like a plastic inner liner so the liner's obviously not era correct and neither is the straps but for the sake of uh, looks i didn't really care for that and basically it was in green i've painted it blank and then i've gone onto google and i've looked at real images of the 18 military police helmets and i basically copied them image i've hand painted these as i do a lot of hand painting for my own stuff so there's a sign behind me that was hand painted along with 50 or 60 other hand painted signs that i've got at various airsoft sites i've been to or around the room or in other people's houses so because I've done the whole painting with them, I thought, right, I'll have a go at doing a helmet. Because I didn't want to buy a proper 18 military police helmet, I decided to do this, get a cheap plastic liner, I think this was like 13 quid on eBay. I spread it black, got the paints, and then hand painted it. So I'm just going to go over the details of what I've painted on. So obviously, if you can see it without the light, because it's quite sunny today, I've put the MP marker on the front. I've put the 18th military police badge on the side. And then I've done the blue, uh, uh, the red and white sashes across it. And then I've put the number of the district uh, that they were working in, which I believe 716 was, um, believe, I forget where I believe that was. I did I did know where it was originally. I think it was something to do with Tet Offensive, so they could have been in Saigon themselves. I cannot quite remember where they were. But apparently they worked alongside the Marines and Tet Offensive on the main part of the battle. So that's uh, the number I went with according to the images I found on Google. So yeah, basically that's my M1 helmet, my first attempt. It's not accurate scale to scale, like it's slightly, you know, two centimetres up or down or the writing's not as big or whatever. So it's not 100% accurate to the real thing, but for a first impression and a homemade account, I'm quite happy with this. It has taken me about two weeks to actually paint. So I've had to go over it with several layers, several coats, and then do several repaints on the various bits that were all hand painted. So it's taken me quite a while to do. But I've saved myself several hundred pounds buying something. I'm not really going to use that frequently. It's just something I wanted in my collection. So, uh, yeah, that's basically a helmet. Uh, the last things I mentioned, I'm wearing a green t-shirt underneath, just standard olive green. And then dog tags underneath, which, you know, I've got tape on it to stop them from chingling. Uh, for realism, I wouldn't have a beard. And as far as I'm aware of, that never really happened. You know, people I know in Vietnam that had beards were certain SF units. A beard is a lifestyle choice for me. I've always had a beard for as long as I can remember now. Uh, it gets trimmed down but I never fully trim it off because I feel weird not having a beard but in realistic terms I would probably have to shave the beard off for military police in a mill sim. I'd say reenactment but I'm not really into the whole reenactment thing because it seems a lot of reenactors have seen a very toxic and OCD with the stuff and my stuff is it's loosely based more than accurate. I'm not buying real kit. It's built, I'm building something. That if I can get real cheap enough I do go with real kit but if it's an extortionate price and I'm not going to use it I buy something that's reproduction or I try and make it myself. Uh, a lot of the reenactors are quite toxic and OCD about certain stuff, so I'm not going to go that far into the level of doing things. So that's why I do it to the level I'm doing it, where I make my own sashes and my own helmets to save quite a bit of money for something. I'm not going to use that that frequently. But for the sake of a Milsim, I probably would shave this off just to make myself look more like military police. As far as I'm aware of, they're only allowed moustaches, and they had to be tightly groomed and maintained. So the beard would obviously be no good, I'd shave the beard off. Uh, but other than that that's my military police kit they did use flak vests but um i will not buy a flak vest because one i don't like using them two i'm not a big fan of them three i'm going to be running around with all the kit on and then i'm just going to take it off anyway and four they're quite rare and five when you can find them they're going to be quite expensive so getting a flak vest is not something that's on my priorities list but uh even then i've seen pictures where they haven't even wore a flak vest so obviously for the temperature they're running around for the same reason i don't want one they didn't wear them but I have seen quite a lot of pictures where they have worn them. Same with helmets. Um, 
the type of helmet I'm wearing. Sometimes they wore caps and sometimes they just wore standard US Army helmets. I've seen a couple of them images as well. So you don't necessarily need the 18 Pilcher Police style helmet. Just for the look to go with the brass style, I thought that I'd make one. Just because it stands out more as 18 Pilcher Police. So that's why I've built the kit. So uh, it's taken me a couple of weeks to actually get around to doing this sort of kit because it's just finding the motivation to do it. And then everything I talk about is all winged. It's not scripted. It's just off the top of my head. So if I say anything wrong or mispronounce something, it's because I've winged it and I've just come out with random stuff. Again, I don't get paid for these. They're not scripted. I'm not doing these in the studio. This is just out of my personal collection off the top of my head. And it's for airsofters, not for reenactments. So I just do these as a quick guide for guys that do uh, Vietnam airsoft or Vietnam milsims, which, you know, border on reenactment stuff. Uh, so yeah, basically this is it. I have got other videos still yet to do, but again, it's getting the motivation to do the videos and put them together. As I try and set up with the background with the screen and I try and make them look a bit better. And then I've got to do all the editing and etc. So it does take me a while to get around to doing them. I do have a another two or three kits I need to do on. The next one I'll probably do is the NVA kernel that I've been building. I'll probably do a kit on that when I've completed the kit. I just haven't quite done it yet. Uh, so that'll be probably the next video. So for now this is uh, Bravo 1 Bravo Team Airsoft doing the 18th Military Police kit for Airsoft. Thanks for watching.